recently, a woman from Ireland contacted me to tell me how much she enjoyed the stories on the Appalachian Storyteller, and in her email, she shared with me some of her family's history. She went on to tell me that her grandmother was a knocker-upper in her youth. Now, if you're like me, you're probably thinking to yourself, what in the world is a knocker-upper? Well, my friend, I'm glad you asked. So, with that, this is the true story of the knocker-uppers. Our story begins at the dawn of the Industrial Revolution. The world was changing more than at any other point in human history. With the emergence of factories and industries that employed thousands of people who were flocking to the cities for the opportunity to seek employment at one of these state-of-the-art facilities. People from the rural areas flooded into these urban spaces looking for work and the boom in sectors of shipbuilding, engineering, mills and breweries and printing presses, dockyards, and many of the other factories that began springing up all over the landscape. But you see, with these new opportunities came new challenges, particularly the need for punctuality. That's right, workers had to be on time every single day. Now, back on the farms in the countryside, mornings unfolded at a much different pace. The first light of dawn would slowly seep through the windows like a whispered invitation from the sun, coaxing them from their sleep. And perhaps that familiar crow of the barnyard rooster would follow, echoing across the fields, signaling the start of a new day. Now, there was no rush. No rigid schedule to bind them either. And if they woke up a bit later one day or earlier the next, well, it barely mattered. Because the pace of life flowed with the seasons and the weather, and it allowed the freedom to begin and to end their work each day just as nature dictated. Every day was unhurried and flexible as the sun charted his course across the sky. But in these new lives, oh, the rules had changed. The relentless hum of the city demanded precision. Each workday had to begin at the same unforgiving hour, no matter what the weather was or the season. That's right, punctuality was no longer a casual affair. It was a matter of survival. And being late, it, oh, it would mean more than a scolding. It might lead to a fine or a cut in their already meager wages, or even the worse, the loss of their jobs. The stakes were high, to say the very least, and the pressure to rise on time weighed heavily on each person. But in this bustling new world, without the sun or the rooster to guide them, how in the world could they ensure that they wouldn't oversleep and risk everything? Hey guys, J.D. here from the Appalachian Storyteller, and I hope you're enjoying today's true story about the knocker-uppers. If you like stories like this, I hope you'll consider checking out my new book. It's full of stories just like the ones you're listening to now. And now, back to the story. A curious invention known as the alarm clock had recently emerged from France. But its ticking hands were still a mystery to most folks. Few had even seen one, and whispers floated through the streets that it couldn't be trusted either to wake you up when it needed to. For those who couldn't afford to gamble on an unreliable contraption, there was only one dependable option, the human alarm clock. Just like that, necessity, as it often does, sparked the birth of a new trade, the knocker-uppers. These folks would emerge from the shadows of each early morning. Their job was simple, yet vital. Wake up the slumbering masses from their beds, ensuring they started their day on time. These early risers, armed with sharp instincts and an unfailing sense of time, were paid to rouse their clients at the break of dawn. With the stakes so high, people would gladly handed over a few coins each week for the assurance that someone would be there right on time, 
to knock them from their dreams and into the day ahead. The name came naturally, because you see, in the early days of this peculiar profession, these determined souls would rap loudly on the doors, sometimes clanging bells or making all sorts of racket, but they never failed to wake their clients. These knocker-uppers were pretty slick. They used a baton or a short, heavy stick to knock on their clients' doors, or sometimes they used a long and a light stick that was made out of bamboo to reach windows on the higher floors. And in return for the task, the knocker-upper would be paid a few pennies a week. And like all things, some knocker-uppers were better than others. Some wouldn't leave their client's window until they were positive that they had been awakened, while others would simply tap a few times and then move on. Some knocker-uppers soon adopted a more subtle technique. Armed with long poles, reminiscent of fishing rods, they would reach up gently and tap on the upstairs bedroom windows. A delicate knock meant only for those who had paid for it. Some took to using a more inventive approach, using pea shooters to send tiny missiles tapping against the glass. These methods ensured their wake-up calls were as precise as they were discreet, disturbing only the slumber of those who invested in a timely start to their day. A skilled knocker-upper knew the job wasn't finished until they were certain their client was truly awake. They would linger just long enough to catch a signal from the bleary-eyed sleeper, whether it was a wave or a nod or a few choice words mumbled through the cracked window. They quickly learned to navigate this spectrum of morning moods. While some greeted the day with a smile, others met it with a scowl and a gruff curse. But no matter the response, a good knocker-upper took it all in stride, knowing that every sleepy smile or grumble meant another successful wake-up call. Now, many of the knocker-uppers' clients were factory workers who paid out of their own pockets for the wake-up call. But there were times when factories or private businesses hired them to wake up their entire workforce. In these cases, the job was even more hurried. There was no time to wait for a sleepy signal of acknowledgement. Instead, the knocker-upper would give a quick series of taps on the windows and move on down the line, trusting that the brief sound would stir the workers from their dreams. In this way, these factories kept the machinery of industry churning with clock-like precision. Now, this approach, however, came with two significant drawbacks. For one, many neighbors weren't eager to rise at the crack of dawn, and they were far from pleased with all that racket breaking up their morning peace. And secondly, even if they did need to be up at that hour, they weren't too thrilled about getting the service for free, while others had to pay for it. The unintended wake-up calls sparked more than a few grumbles and sideways glances, as the knocker-uppers inadvertently became the neighborhood's most notorious early birds. These knocker-uppers, they had to master the art of organization, planning their morning rounds with the precision of a clockmaker. Each of their clients' wake-up calls was meticulously scheduled, ensuring that they would wake up at just the right moment. Over in the mining towns, the shifts were more unpredictable, and the task was even more complex. Outside of many homes, there would be small slates, known as knocky-up boards, hung on the door. And on these boards, customers scrawled notes in chalk, detailing which shift they were working and exactly when they needed to be awake. That's right, being a knocker-upper wasn't an easy job. No, just think about it. They themselves had to wake up before the sun and venture out into the dark streets, no matter what the weather was, braving rain, sleet, or snow, and freezing temperatures to wake up their customers. And a good knocker-upper would have as many as a hundred people to wake up each morning. So they kept odd hours, trading the light of the day for the quiet hours of the night. They would sleep while the world was awake all around them, only to rise when the streets were dark and the city slumbered. By that time, most people were tucked into their bed, but these vampires were already on the move, 
starting their rounds as early as 3 a.m., determined to never be late for a single customer. Now, eventually, the alarm clock evolved into a reliable and affordable household staple, and the need for these knocker-uppers gradually faded. One by one, homes were slowly filled with the mechanical chimes of these new inventions, and the knocker steadily tapping grew silent. And nowadays, they've all but disappeared and are relegated to history's pages and have been mostly forgotten. Just a quirky footnote in the pages of history. Now you and me, oh, we've got all kinds of alarms on our phones, watches, TVs, radios, and all sorts of gadgets. For us, it's almost impossible to fathom a time when simply waking folks up was a vital job. Oh, but it was. Knocker-uppers were the quiet guardians of the morning, ensuring that the world stirred to life with the first light of each day. So there you go, my friends. Now you know the true story of the knocker-uppers. What about you? Are you an early riser? Could you have done this job? I look forward to reading your comments below. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next story. Mm -hmm.